A young girl lost her life at one of our mountain waterfalls over the weekend. It happened at White Waterfalls in the Nantahala National Forest in Jackson County. News 13's Rex Hodge reports officials are emphasizing safety measures as more visitors are expected with warmer weather arriving. With warmer weather arriving, Jackson County emergency officials and Forest Service officials are reminding folks to be especially careful around waterfalls like White Waterfalls, especially in light of this tragedy. White Waterfalls on the North and South Carolina line is a stunning sight. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office says late Sunday afternoon reports came in about a three-year-old girl who had been visiting with her family, emergency crews getting word from Oconee County. The Sheriff's Office says the young girl, Nevaeh Jade Newswanger, was swept from the top of the falls, the current taking her over the edge. First responders spotted her body before nightfall Sunday. Her body then recovered not long after midnight. The U.S. Forest Service's Kathy Dow doesn't have all the details in this case, but says... So the rocks are obviously very slippery, and people can lose their balance and easily be carried by the current over the top of the falls. Her advice is not to play in the river at the top of the falls. The current can be deceptively strong. Dowd recommends viewing the falls from a safe distance. So you have a beautiful view of it. You don't get to play in the water at these places, but there are plenty of other places where the water is safe to play in, so go to those spots. Recommendations. I asked about anything stronger. Maybe there need to be further restrictions. Well, any restrictions that we would put on here would have to be enforced. So we'd really have to have somebody here 24 hours. And the prevention measure is really up to the folks who are visiting to stay out of the water. Other safety tips include visiting with family or groups, wearing toe-covered shoes with good traction, fully charging cell phones, and never jumping from waterfalls. Also, heating posted signs, although sometimes they're swiped. So don't assume that if you don't see a sign, it's a safe place to visit. So it's tragic. Visitors saddened by the news. Your children and your grandchildren are your greatest treasures. Just be as careful as you can to try to have safe and happy visit. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office is offering their condolences to the Newswanger family. There are new discussions this evening about waterfall safety measures after a three-year-old dies at a Jackson County waterfall. Thousands of tourists will flock to waterfalls this summer, and officials at one site have decided it's time to focus on preventing deaths. News 13's Kimberly King reports from Transylvania County, where a high fence has been up for years. I'm at Looking Glass Falls in Transylvania County, just outside Brevard, and there is a steel fence at the top of Looking Glass Falls and clear signage. Now, folks who are familiar with this waterfall say every summer people do go around this barrier and take major risks. Nonetheless, they know this is a deterrent to many others. Brevard Fire Chief Bobby Cooper walks a 35-foot stretch of an 8-foot high fence that's helped ward off risk takers at Looking Glass Falls. So the, the fence is trying to keep people out of the water at the top of the falls. Because people were dying? Correct. He says people continue to take risks and walk around the fence to get close, even with warning signs. People tear a lot of that stuff down. Since 2016, there have been multiple deaths at area waterfalls, including Whitewater Falls, where the young girl died Sunday. Eight people have died at Bradley Falls since 2000. Wildlife officials are making changes at Bradley, building a new safer viewing area to eliminate deaths. In Jackson County at Whitewater Falls, there's been a high rate of deaths. So tragically, you have counted up 18 deaths at this waterfall. Yes, ma'am. If people would obey the, obey the signs, uh, uh, these accidents wouldn't wouldn't happen. But Todd Dillard, emergency management director, says he's interested in what's gone on at other sites, including the installation of high fences. Is that something maybe worth talking about? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm willing to sit down with our colleagues and maybe uh, develop some ideas that where people could still enjoy our, our natural beauty of our, our area in Western North Carolina, but also to keep people away from the edges as much as possible. Park rangers and emergency response officials are well aware each time someone dies at a waterfall. And they are also aware that there aren't that many barriers at waterfalls across Western North Carolina. Some of them tell me it may be worth more serious discussion. A new 2022 primary debate tonight. Five of the six Democratic congressional candidates for NC11 faced off in McDowell County. 
The candidates all share the same goal, to unseat incumbent Republican Madison Cawthorn. News 13's Samir Nefsi explains what the candidates plan to do for voters. There was a wide range of questions the five congressional candidates faced while vying to win over voters. It all took place here on the campus of McDowell Technical Community College, where one controversial comment raised many eyebrows. The race is on for the NC-11 Democratic congressional seat with a consensus incumbent congressman Republican Madison Cawthorn must go. We had Mark Meadows. We had an empty seat. And now we have Cawthorn. And I think it is about time the people of Western North Carolina to have someone in Congress who cares about them. Election integrity and access to voting, both important to all of the candidates. I really do think we need to be building up our infrastructure around cybersecurity and making sure that our elections are um, really resilient to any interference, both domestic and foreign. That we have in place is restoring the right to vote to felons. That is very, very important. You do your time, you pay your penalty, you should be given all the rights that every citizen of America has. Another topic, how to bridge predominantly red areas with blue populations. I think we should have representation that reflects the fabric of our community and who we are. Right now, we don't have a designated caseworker to serve our veterans, even though we have a lot of veterans in Western North Carolina. It is about working alongside people shoulder to shoulder so that they can live out their dreams in their hometown. Adding that's achieved by addressing in-depth issues like inflation and prices at the pump. We need someone in Congress who understands that and who will fight day in and day out for the kind of policies that are difference makers. All the candidates except Bynum Lundford support legislation that would create forms of equality for marginalized communities. We've had a black president these black mayors, black uh, police chiefs, everywhere these blacks, I don't know what the problem is. There is no problem. I'm sorry. Are you a Democrat? And Democratic candidate Marco Gutierrez was the only one to not show up at the debate. All five candidates who did take to the stage believe that this election specific has the best chance to turn the district blue, which many say is nothing short of an uphill battle.